Hello and welcome to episode 34 of the Spirit Box podcast. And today we're going back to our roots with a show about the gin, but more specifically about rukia, treatment of sorcery, evil eye and the gin. So I've done a video before on rukia and, and what it is and um, the various elements that make up Rukia and, and why it's it's allowed uh, and gets a pass and other forms of sorcery don't um, essentially because it's a form of healing sanctioned healing well what I'm going to go through today is extracts from a book by Ben Halima Adaruf and he was born in 1967 in Tunisia and has been treating um, patients who are afflicted by sorcery, evil eye, and the jinn in in France for um, for many years. He came to France uh, in 1986 and stayed there for for 20 years. Um, so very interesting polymath, and a remarkable um, mind. Memorized the Quran um, and uh, he's been practicing rukia since 1997. So now since 2007, he's back in Africa and uh, where is where he spends uh, his time training people in, in the skills required for uh, Rukia and that form of healing. So the, the book he has um, written, well, it's more of a monograph really, is called uh, The Rukia Treatment of Sorcery, Jinn and Evil Eye by the Quran and Prophetic Medicine. And in it, he discusses three core issues, which are the aforementioned jinn, sorcery, and the evil eye. Um, what I'm going to discuss uh, or, or go through here are primarily his uh, thinking and observations of dealing with the jinn. And uh, methods of extraction and the... Um, I guess what to expect when, when 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 dealing with the gin through this process. Anyway, let's get stuck into it. So I'm not going to touch on the sorcery stuff too much. It's exactly this kind of thing you'd expect. The various different types of sorcery afflicting people, problems in a relationship, problems with health, problems at work, that kind of stuff. Um, lack of interest in things that previously interested you, your energy, or pointing your affections in the wrong direction. It also goes into kind of how these methods of sorcery are delivered by stepping on talismans or, you know, the equivalent of, of um, powders within hoodoo um, um, and curses and all that kind of shenanigans. You know, things like sorcery through food, dis distant sorcery, things are buried in the earth, buried in the graveyard, sorcery put in a well, all the different types of things that are, are, are fairly common with, with say, folk magic, um, independent of where you are in the world. But the gin is quite interesting because we start to talk about quite specific elements that are very much isolated in in the whole world of folk Islam. So there are many reasons why a jinn would interfere with humans, but there must always be a reason. In the following cases, there are always three possibilities. The jinn may be inside the body of the person, outside it, or going in and out of the person as he likes. When he is inside the body, he may possess the person and speak through him. This may be permanent periodic or occasional. The most frequent reason for this is sorcery. Sorcery does not need to be accompanied by a jinn, but jinns are sometimes sent to strengthen the effect of sorcery. 
For example, to break up a couple, the jinn can be given. The jinn can give the man a disgusting or frightening appearance in the eyes of his wife. To prevent someone working, they will get the employer to reject him or not trust him. But the most that jinns do is to mentally disturb the victim. He will get no ending thoughts and obsessions if someone is speaking in his head, as if someone is speaking in his head all day long. They often play a role in illnesses and physical pains to disturb the body's natural functioning. Jinns sent by sorcery are forced to do the job. They may be good through Muslims or wicked and unbelievers. The good ones will do the job with reluctance and the wicked one will add more. In Africa particularly, there's a long tradition of cooperation between jinns and sorcerers. As the tradition, uh, as the original religion is worshipping statues and jinns through river, wood and or sea and slaughtering apples for them and offering various gifts, jinns have developed a science of serving sorcerers and accompanying us and accomplishing astonishing things for them. They will be with almost all witchcrafts. For example, the victim could completely lose his mind by sending a thousand of jinns into him. And therefore, almost all the jinns you find in sick people are professionals working for sorcerers. The second reason is revenge. Jinns live all around us. They are mainly in disused and uninhabited places. Dirty and humid places are especially inhabited by jinns because jinns find their food in the remaining meals and excrements. They are especially in old and ill-maintained houses, but also in new and well-maintained ones. By living around us, they avoid us. But a single brutal action without saying bishmela or throwing something away or pouring hot water might reach them and harm them and cause handicap or death. Then they can retaliate or revenge one of their relatives by beating the person who inadvertently harmed them. The person may be partially paralysed or heavy. He may be anxious or depressed, have suicidal or harassing thoughts or other manifestations. This often goes with nightmares. The person is beaten or prosecuted by scaring people. Jinns have less reason and more passion than we do. They have three strong passions, pride, love and vengeance. Jinns can devote his whole life to doing nothing but retaliating against a person. The third reason is love. This happens when we undress without saying bishmala. Jinns see a snake and they can be sexually stimulated, like when we see undressed persons, because there is a kind of sexual compatibility between the jinn and human beings. I mean, if you just undress without saying bishmala, that endangers you to be possessed by jinn. But having any kind of forbidden or shameful sexual activity is an open door for jinns to join in and they may get linked to the person. Male jinns fall in love with women and females, jinnya, with men. Homosexuality cases are rare with jinns. The kind of persons jinns like are the people with no wickedness in heart towards their fellows. So, as we must love the good, we must hate the evil and have no mercy for unfair persons. We should not be gentle. So to do for others what we don't really want to do. A hearty person should do better. Should a hearty person should better listen to his heart rather than trust other people. The mentality to accept to undergo others predisposes the person to jinns or sorcery. It occurs that this lover stays incognito. Most of the time the person will have erotic dreams. Generally these dreams are not difficult but rather pleasant for men because the jinnya appears as the ideal woman for the man. They are also of a high frequency. While the norm for a young bachelor is once every 10-15 to 15 days, if the woman is subject to the jinn, if it is a woman subject to the jinn, sex is very intense. If she refuses or resists, she can be forced and blocked. Many people feel this. We feel blocked while going to bed and we unblock as soon as we make the move or we pronounce the name Allah. The jinn that appears in the shape of the husband to cheat her and, and once the act is over, she realizes it, that it was not him. When the person is married, the jinn sometimes will accept the spouse, but most of the time he does not bear him, therefore the person will not bear him too. This happens mostly to women. The husband should then act with tenderness to have sexual intercourse. If he insists, the wife may be upset and cry, cry and it will end in dispute. If, in the extreme case, if the person accepts to marry the jinn, she can get children with the jinn. The status of the children is not clear. He will 
mostly be in Jin's world and you needn't worry about him and don't think you are responsible in bringing him up. But a woman can give birth to a mixed child, the sperm of the Jin mixed with the human ones in conception. These children are heavily disabled. We need to understand that making up of a couple in Jin that the making up of a couple in Jin's is different to ours. They have no weddings with celebrations and witnesses. One just needs one just needs to love another. They go together and it is a faithful and attached couple. With human beings, they behave the same way and find it lawful to defend with jealousy their spouse against any other competitor. Even true Muslim jinns may be in this situation. Now, just a couple of observations there. <clears throat> Firstly, the idea of sexual interest with uh, a jinn and a human being. Again, the exact same thing occurs in, in within fairy lore. And the female, as which is referred to as the jinniyah in here, there's a specific type of fairy called... Um, Alana Shi, uh, which Morgan Dalamere mentioned when she was on the show uh, earlier in the year. Um, and then the idea of the mixed child. You can see here they said that children are uh, mixed of the sperm of the jinn with the human one um, that are conceived are heavily disabled. And that harks back quite to the idea of the changeling. You know, when, when when you read accounts of what a changeling looked like or, or their physical appearance, their mannerisms, it all harks, uh, it's, 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 it's all descriptive of some degenerative diseases or illnesses. So it's common themes there. Now, another reason that a jinn may... Um, take up residence, quite literally, in, in a human being, is, is for accommodation. Jinns have a simple life compared to ours. They don't transform nature and live in the environment they find. They look for appropriate houses and cannot build their own. They look for food, food remaining in excrement. They cannot cook or store food. Beside these two preoccupations, they don't have much to do. Some are devoted to worshipping, others build up families, and others spend time fighting. Others attend sinful places and take part in human vices. When a jinn is in a human body, he is fed and housed with better food and a home than one would find outside and generally does not need for more to be satisfied. For that reason, jinns can live in, into men only to be housed. But they need to breach to enter, such as sorcery, evil eye, or jinns in the person. They can also enter in a moment of weakness, rage, anger, sorrow, fear. Therefore, as soon as a person is hurt by one or many of these troubles, he may be inhabited by jinns looking for a home. Unfortunately, protection prayers do not longer guarantee do no longer guarantee for sufficient protection, since the person has a breach like a wound, exposes the body to microbes, and regular hygiene rules are not enough. Sometimes the jinns in the body will not manifest, and the person doesn't feel anything. The person can feel heaviness in the part of their body where the jinn is. There are two types of jinn, those linked to the person, they come to life with him from his parents, devils, and those who are free, they meet, plan and work to draw people to hell. When a person follows religion, he can easily physically dominate the devil, but thoughts and feelings are more difficult to control. When a person achieves a spiritual breakthrough and gets closer to Allah, so that he controls his thoughts and emotions and leaves no possibility of influence to the devil attached to him, devils consider him to be dangerous and delegate a devil or a jinn working for the devil as a or to lead him astray. He then tries to upset him, to argue with people, to stop him devoting spirituality, to lead him to sins. This case is very rare because only a few people have been able to dominate their devil. But it's good to know. One of the jinns who came to live inside the person might be a Muslim or later converts to Islam or tries to help the person against bad ones. So the person will be gnawed between various effects. The jinn can also change his status. He may come by sorcery, then fall in love and, or stay after the sorcery is removed to be housed and fed. Or he can come to be housed and fall in love with the person. There are also jinns who are not in love but take sexual advantage of the situation or who are sexually possessive without love of the person. This will result in the, when the person's problems last a long time. As time goes by, he will accumulate troubles until he loses his mind or becomes a tramp. 
therefore we need to treat things till to the end and do not neglect the problem because it is bearable it can cause others now the next bit is talking about jinns in the house and saying that old and abandoned house are not always are almost always inhabited and new houses are often inhabited too so it's easier for a jinn to enter a house and to stay there than to the inhabitants to stop them most of the time jinns are unnoticed um they just go along doing their own thing so jinns are not rich in science they do not have access to books and do not have the many of the religious activities and initiatives in order to progress in religion they seek for religious atmosphere amongst humans unfortunately these good jinns are few the majority are neither good nor bad like ordinary people just living their life and those who are the most noticeable are the bad ones who hate practicing muslims when those are in a house, we'll feel a heavy atmosphere. People and people suffering from sorcery, evil eye or jinn, as well as young children, will feel it more. And might sometimes see jinns under different appearances. Jinns would also harm them, disturbing their sleep and causing them to have nightmares. Living together will sooner or later cause the house inhabitants to accidentally hit jinns and therefore receive their vengeance. Or they undress without saying bishmala and jinns fall in love with them. If in addition to some member of the household are bewitched, they will be more subject to it because the jinns will be easy will easily enter them. The jinns in the house may have been sent there by sorcery, thus they will directly act to harm the people in the house. So how do we heal people who are afflicted by the jinn? Well the patient's participation is very important, especially for the jinn. He must deprive the jinn from everything he likes, sins, haram, food, occupation, prohibited by religion, and constantly reminding him with Allah's name, zikr, Quran, prayers. It's hard to remove a jinn from someone who, as soon as he leaves your place, goes back to sins. So teach the patients how to react if attacked in their dreams. I've been told that some practicing colleagues keep the professional secrets, so to be the only solution keepers. Doing so, they are following this, the, the cursed people's footsteps. Those who conceal the clear signs we have sent down and the guidance we shall, after we have made it clear for the people in the book, on them shall be Alice's curse and the curse of the entitled to curse the cow. Chapter 2, verse 159. Keeping Islamic good teachings to maintain people in, in ignorance and defend one's own interests is high treason to Islam. And if everyone could self-cure, that sorcerer had no clients and they disappear, so much the best and we would have won the battle. There is no market to defend, nor customer to keep, but a battle to win. And we should teach all Muslims how to be part of this battle by not going to sorcerers and seers. To protect them, correctly practice their religion, better understand sorcery, jinn and evil eye, and have the highest ability to resist. So patience, so teach patients all that can help them going, them going through not to relapse and help the others around them. The more you teach them, the more Allah will teach you and bless your knowledge. The psychological fight is very important to get rid of jinns. A jinn in person, whatever the reasons of his presence and thing he does, transmits his thoughts and feelings to the person. This happens naturally because they share the same body. The jinn thinks in the head of the patient and the latter thinks he is the one thinking and receives these thoughts without really understanding what's happening to him. Similarly, a person feels what the jinn feels. He hates what he hates, he likes what he likes and gets angry when he gets angry, is afraid when he is, does not bear what he does not. A person may even have homosexual desire when a jinn from the opposite sex lives in him and has sexual desire when seeing somebody. Jinn's emotions are most clear in the case of the person is married and has a lover jinn. It is very likely he will not bear his partner. Beside a non-Muslim jinn or a non-practicing one, a person may make him reject religion or attract him towards another religion. This leads some people to reduce or leave their practice because it becomes too difficult talking about thoughts can become an obsession the utmost is when two people with jinns meet all reactions are possible but most of the time they are negative because the jinns often feel their colleagues as rivals as if they do not want to share their territory this can lead to a physical struggle between them or through the bewitched people 
So what are the general methods for treating people with gin? So sorcery sometimes comes with gin. Gin always tried to hide sorcery. Evil eye may be presented with sorcery and gin. So it's better to systematically cure the three problems together. Most of the verses mentioned hereafter are common with the three treatments. Some are special for one of the problems. Since it is just as easy to complete the treatment, I prefer giving all without distinction. The following treatment is therefore valid for all three, and I will later on be precisely specific. Firstly, the patient lies down. <clears throat> this way he'll be fully relaxed to focus on the Quran recitation and praising Allah so the evil in him, be it known or not, vanish. If in addition he has a jinn, the patient takes the intention to have the jinn listen in order for the Quran to reach him at most. We entirely cover him with a light bed sheet. The role of the sheet is to make a greenhouse effect. The recited Quran concentrates on the person. In addition, it is better to avoid the patient looking at the scene because jinns can see through him and can impress, try to impress people attending. If it is a woman, this will cover her body shape. If it is not possible to cover him because it is a child or he is scared or asthmatic or choked over the recitation, we must cover the body and leave the head. We then put nine bottles of 1.5 litre of, of water open next to his head. We may put more and this will be discussed below. The heater holds his temples between the thumb and ring finger above the bed sheet. If the evil is located and determined to place the body, he may hold this place instead of the temples or put his finger on it. it then he reads the full series on the joint sheet. Verses are listed in the other paragraph. Putting bottles as close as possible to his mouth and placing the bottle and facing the bottles. Regardless of the patient's reactions, we need the process till the end. All over the recitation, the patient closes his eyes and is completely relaxes to concentrate on the recitation no matter what happens to him. And at the end of the recitation, the heater blows in the opened bottles. Once the rec recitation is complete, the patient stands up and we close the bottles. The evil eye requests five bottles. To remove sorcery, we need a maximum of nine. This is the maximum treatment, removing up to five sorceries. As to the gins, nine bottles are necessary. When I came to Africa, hard cases required 12 bottles, so now we give 12 bottles in all cases in order to counter any situation. There are as many bottles as days, one bottle to be used every day. He drinks half a litre three times a day, morning, noon and evening, on Ramadan, at food times, for the Quran to constantly turn in his body and bathe with the remaining litre at sunset or early in the evening. If the person also has infusions to be taken, he does not need to drink from the bottle and they should bathe with the full bottle. Jinns live all night and sleep at daytime, unlike humans. We need to hit them with the bathing when they wake up to knock them down until the morning. Then they go back to sleep and we start over the following day at the time they wake up and so on all over the treatment. Sorcery has the same nature as gins, and we also bathe in the same times. But when the night becomes too short in northern areas, they wake up before sunset. Thus, when sunset is too late, we should wait, not wait and bathe around 8 p.m. So this is the use of Quranic water, water that has been blessed by recitation of Quranic verses. This is the the principal method of initially removing jinn. Bathing in the Quranic water erases sorcery and chases jinns away. Actually, for the sorcery case, the water is more important than the recitation and giving the person ready bottles without reciting on him are, is enough. Whereas for jinn, they absolutely need to recite, even using other techniques described uh, later in, in the book. The Quran recitation burns the jinn. Burning does not mean the same for jinn as it does for us, as they are made of fire. But when they burn, they consume and reduce in volume, lose strength and suffer a lot. To kill them, you need to consume them completely. So we may not know when he is finished. He may become weak until losing all effects, but still remain present. He can recover his strength if the person does not do much zikir and commit sins. 
The jinn resists until his pain becomes bigger than his wish to stay. This depends on his strength, the reason for his presence, and the power of the person. He may stay until he dies. Recitation and bathing are also good for removing the jinn. You recite holding the person. He bathes for 12 days. If the jinnie is still there or caution for if his presence is is still there or for caution if his presence is no longer felt you recite another time and the person bathes again if the person feels the gin in one part of his body you recite holding this very part tapping and massaging from head to toes normally the feeling should move to the bottom following nerves from head to neck along the spinal cord down to the kidneys then around the hips and along the legs seen on profile till ankle and the feet plant to the big toe they just just follow the feeling of the of of the patient massaging and tapping the body all along unfortunately if there are several cases where only recitation and bathing are not sufficient First of all, when the genie is located in a precise place of the body, often the head when having headaches or obsessive thoughts, or in the chest when feeling pressed or and suffocation, or in the intimate parts when it is a sexual issue. You should start by putting one or more suction pots in this place. This detaches the genie from the place he is and can easily slide into the feet until he leaves. He can also exit from other places such as the mouth when he is close to it if the person feels like vomiting. The other cases where only recitation are, is not enough are sorcery. When linked to sorcery or blocked by it, you must start by removing the sorcery. So far, the diagnostic can only be established by the symptoms mentioned in the first chapter. Other diagnostic methods are possible. Information from Jin will be seen in the next chapter, inshallah. There are also dreams announcing sorcery. At last, we should not neglect the prayer of need because we should never give up struggling when Allah stands by us. If you don't know how to come over it, you repeat the prayer on, of need until Allah gives a solution. It is a mistake to attack the jinn before removing the sorcery. The jinn cannot go. He suffers but does not die. He struggles and moves aimlessly around. The patient suffers. The jinn expands in the body as he struggles. He can physically move the patient's body or speak through his mouth. There is a risk that after the treatment, he does not he does not stop speaking and keeps moving the patient's body. Or else he will start speaking at any moment. Therefore, the person is possessed. You should not take this risk. If the sorcery is symbolic or eaten, you just need to give him water for bathing and infusion. When the person has sorcery in its body, it's necessary to recite the Quran on him with sucking pots. But if he has a jinn in, him, in at the same time, do not insist on them. And take the intention to remove the sorcery and burn the jinns just a bit so they decide to leave as soon as they can. This is the most common mistake made by non-professionals, attacking the jinn without removing the sorcery. This is a tiring task for the healer, the patient and the jinn, with poor results and the risk of the jinn getting more expansion in the body of the person by struggling. So when you receive someone who already went through it, or on who a lot of recitation has been done, and maybe was beaten and who fought, if you were able to diagnose the sorcery, just give him the treatment for the sorcery and do not touch the jinn. Tell the jinn that you do not want to harm him, that you just want to remove the sorcery so he can leave. And if there are other sorceries beside this one, he should show it to the patient. If you happen to recite on one, on a person to remove sorcery while he has a jinn, take the intention of only burning the sorcery and free the way for the jinn to leave. Next. Integrated into the nervous system. When a jinn is stuck to a person's brain so that both personalities are almost merged uh, or his hold on thoughts is too important or he completely possesses the person, you need to loose, loosen him from the brain before reciting the Quran. You take a sharp tool, a potato peeler for example, hold the person's head, recite Fatiha once, the verse of the throne, and the last three shuras, then you heat the edge of the blade with a lighter, and you give little strokes from the back of the neck up to the middle of the forehead, from one temple to the other via the top of the head, only once from the back up to the forehead, and from the right to the left. The person should feel some burns. If it cools down, you need to heat the blade again and continue. This method is very efficient to remove the gym because he feels the burning more than the person does. And later on, he is reached, he is more reached by the recitation. 
It is also very efficient to put a suction pot on to detach and weaken the gin when he is in the head. The suction pot is put onto the nape on the spinal cord, which is at the base of the back of the neck. You can also put two between both ears on the last piece of flesh before the skull. This is very efficient, but requires shaving of the head of the patient. If the gin are in another place in the body, it is also efficient to put a suction pot right in that place and put your hand near it during the recitation. The gin may have two settling points and move from one to the other. Then you need to put a suction pot on both. If the gin are everywhere in the body, do not hesitate to put suction points, suction pots everywhere. Resistant gin. If he is so attached to a person that he resists until death, this might happen with love cases, you need to apply the ultimate technique, hit the patient's feet. This method up to now is 100% effective as long as the gin is not linked to sorcery or struck with psychological problems. Nevertheless, you need to control well advantages and drawbacks. The first drawback is the patient feels the strokes more acutely than normal. The only case where he feels nothing is when he is totally possessed or the gin can take possession of his body during the process. Otherwise, the person feels the strokes and the gin inside him as well. The gin will suffer more than him and transmit his emotions to the host. At a certain point, the gin leaves his place, mostly the head, and starts migrating towards the foot until he reaches the foot, then leaves by the toes. When he leaves the head, the person may feel light and relieved and say the gin is gone. Actually, he's just left the head. When he reaches the foot, the gin feels the strokes are blowing him off, so does the patient. It is rare that the patient bears this till the end. Most of the time, you will need to hold him. He might want you to stop and get angry with people curing and holding him. When the person is fragile, he can be shocked by the treatment and, for example, might refuse to undergo that another time. The more a person is fragile, the more you will have to beat softly and that will be enough. The second drawback is you need to, is that you can make a mistake on the diagnosis. The gin is linked to sorcery and will not leave, no matter how hard you hit. When you've beaten a lot and the gin is obviously crushed and despaired, but does not leave and says he can't leave, you should suspect the presence of sorcery. The advantage is success. Where we struck, we mastered the gin and forced him to leave. And if the gin is linked to sorcery, he may confess it, and when he can't bear the pain, and this enables you to remove the sorcery and solve the situation. You need to make sure that none of the attendees stay in the path of the gin when he leaves or else he may directly enter into him, especially if he has a breach. And I'm begging you, do not hit the face and avoid any other part of the body but the sole of the feet. Weak points of the gin. Firstly, fire. We discover that fire is a weak point for gins. We know that they are created of fire and we discover that they can melt in the contact of fire and cannot bear it. If you approach a candle to a patient's sole of the feet so that he can feel the heat without being burned, the genie suffers a lot from the heat. It is possible to approach a candle to another part of the body if the gin is there. But since we are trying to make him leave by the feet, you should bring the candle back near the foot and if the gin leaves that place. Near the foot if the gin leaves that place. Actually, even sorcery is vulnerable to heat and lighted candles help it with pumping it out of the body. So in order to put all chances on our side, we advise that during all recitations that you put lighted candles near the patient's feet. I propose that in following editions, we will be able to, enha- in- to propose enhanced methods. Allah is almighty and all merciful. Yet is evolution. Yes, there is evolution with fire. First of all, the candle or piece of wood can be a vector in carrying the Quran like the water or writing or incense. You can recite on perfume candles and leave them lighted in the house. This will complete the action of spraying the house. If, for example, you have troubles in the house, you can in addition... You can, in addition to what precedes, recite Ayat al-Kursi 30 times on on perfume-lighted candles and then leave them lighted one hour everywhere in the house. If you have a chimney or use wood for cooking, recite recite on the wood before or while burning to burn the gin bothering you. Light the candles and recite the Quran with the intention to burn him and read from time to time the verse, the cow... Chapter 2, verse 148. I will include in this subject a testimony of one of my pupils. 
on my humble opinion from what I have learned from my Rocky experience. Torturing the gin by hitting the patient or any kind of violence is far less efficient than putting two lit candles in front of each foot. If you light four candles, two in, e two in front of each foot of the patient, the patient will feel after a few minutes of Quran lecture and unbearable heat that as if the embers were under the feet and that shows the pain the gin undergoes. Before starting the treatment, I make sure the patient notices by himself that the heat of the candles can make he can feel is about null. Then the gins are hit by the heat. It happens they scream and lift the patient's feet. Some of my patients went to Africa to get cured and they told me they got more physical problems resulting in brachia because the healers beat up the gin. From what I learned and the experience Allah gave me, I want to ask the community of healers not to hit the patients and they will certainly see by themselves how inefficient this method is by following up with the patients. The latter will often flee the healer as much as he flees the gin. Salt. Another weak point of the gin is salt. To help them come out, you can pour salt on the patient once recovered with a sheet. Or keep the salt in your hand and massage him with it. But best is sea water. We found out that people living near the sea or regularly bathing in the sea do not have gins, even when they have sorcery. Bathing with sea water is much better than normal water. Zamzam water is also efficient. And if you can, enter the sea with the patient and recite the Quran on him, totally immersing him, immersing him for 30 seconds. It would be much easier to get the gin out. Next is smoke. A third weak point of the gin is smoke. Write verses or prayers on a sheet of paper, for example, the verse of the throne. Roll the sheet and fold it until it reaches two centimeters width. Light the bottom, then turn it off by blowing it on it or for the smoke to come out, then hold it under a bed sheet in order to let the patient smell the smoke. Light up and blow off in order to get more smoke as often when needed. This will help chase the gin out. Now, interestingly, there's a, there's a methodology for curing um, cattle for the evil eye, which involves writing the alphabet on a piece of paper and then burning that piece of paper under a cow's nose to clear it of, of, of the evil eye in Ireland. So it's interesting, it's quite a similar methodology. The other element is asking the Muslim jinn's help with uh, removal. So ask Allah to send angels or Muslim jinn to help you. These jinns are more pious. They're more like angels. That's why Iblis was a jinn. And on his spiritual level, it allowed him to be with the angels. So um, a healer can employ um, Muslim jinns to help. They can also kill jinns in dreams. A sorcerer and our enemies who consult a sorcerer. We read 11 times the verse of the throne before sleeping. We read the cow, chapter 2, verse 148, 11 times, or to be more efficient, 30 or 50 or 100 times. And then you make sure you decide you read the Quran on anything you see in your dreams. As soon as you read, the thing will flee. So you must catch it first, then read the Quran until you kill it. You can also kill it with a physical weapon. In all cases, doing that in a dream cannot be a sin. So sleep with the anger and determination to kill your enemies, humans or jinns, and then ask Allah to help you. A girl saw her grandmother in a dream coming to stab her. The grandmother used to make sorcery to her. The girl in the dream grabbed the knife off her and stabbed her. In the morning, the grandmother started vomiting blood and three days later, she died. We said to catch the jinn if he is next to you, catch him with your hands and recite. If he is far, fix him with your eyes in the intention of catching him and he won't be able to escape, then recite. If he flees, you don't need to run after him, just recite. And he will come to your hands, inshallah. Finally, if the jinn presses on you and you feel the weight, you are paralyzed, just stay calm. Don't panic and don't struggle. First catch the jinn by tightening your wrists, the intention of holding him. Then in your head, read Ayat al-Kursi until your tongue is freed and then continue reciting, keeping your wrists tight so he can't flee until he is dead. When sorcery and jinns are gone, all symptoms must go except some physical effects that will gradually, that will go gradually or require medical treatment, wounds, hair loss, weight loss, etc. If some symptoms are gone and some remain, it means some of the problems are gone and some will remain. 
In the case of multiple sorceries, it is normal that not all of them to go at once, only some of them, and they may have to be treated. The jinns will generally leave only after the sorcery is gone, but if there are many jinns, they should also go gradually. What if after the treatment you don't see any improvement or change? It might not be a problem of jinns or sorcery after all. Maybe the person does not apply correctly the treatment, or he might have noticed some changes but not the ones he expected. If there are no changes, repeat the treatment, try new ways, and ask the person to pray a lot and beg for Allah's help. He should be attentive to his dreams since sorcery dreams are almost always significant and reflect the person's problem. If after a second treatment there is still no improvement in the condition, direct the person towards a colleague more experienced in these kind of situations. Now the book goes on to discuss various different ways of um, engaging in conversation with Jin through patients and what to say and what not to say and on how to propose to a jinn that uh, they convert to Islam, how to propose to a jinn that they leave the person that they've um, taken up residence in. A whole raft of, of different um, recommendations. But one of the things that came up in the book that I was not previously aware of that was um, a new topic to me, which was the Ruhans, and um, which seems to be kind of an entire species uh, or type of, of, of being that is some way kind of halfway between angels and halfway between jinn. And I'd like to read that piece to you. I think you'll, you'll get a lot from that. Luminous jinns came to accomplish a mission. Ruhans are jinns very close to angels by their light because they worship Allah permanently. Some Ruhans occur in people's lives to compel them to pious behavior, to bring them wealth in exchange of zikirs, this is why, before Abidjan, I was not very friendly with Ruhans. Someone once called me and told me that some Ruhans were stopping him from going outside the house because they said he will see women and this will reduce his fate. If that happens, Ruhans consider themselves like angels or creatures apart and are upset when they are called jinns. One told me that angels were asking him to publish some books and he wanted me to publish them. I said, your books have nothing new. You will find the same things in other books on the market, so there are no need to publish them. He said, but the angels told me to do so. I said, but the angels didn't say anything to me. Other persons are able to attract Ruhans by repeating thousands of times Ayat al-Kursi or the Fatia or Lal illala hala illala ala or other zikirs because there are a lot of ruhans repeating that permanently all their life and if a person repeats it enough they will be attracted by the zikir like angels are and will come at this point it is possible to ask them for some services some to cure people but more often to bring wealth if you know how to communicate them ruhans will do it because they realize good actions in return you will continue the zikir they're like the problem is that fitya object is dunya and we forget allah ruhans do not necessarily have the intelligence to al analyze the pertinence of the situation having the light and having the science are two different things if one can be pious without intelligence and experience you can take a jinn who knows nothing about life and make him repeat shadhada and then tell him from now on you'll repeat shahada or such zikir continuously day and night wherever you are and there he goes in the ascending spiral of light with no end he will quickly become a ruhan but will have no knowledge of religion so up to now i was not very friendly with ruhans but these ones are a little different first of all they receive their orders from angels thus from allah this is part of the tools allah can use to allah belongs an army of the skies and earth and knows not the army knows not armies but the ones of your lord allah can directly execute his will himself he can ask angels to do it he can deliver believers through the teachings of religion and or through dreams he can manipulate unbelievers sometimes even manipulate shaitan and, and allah also uses good jinns and ruhans this the message the miss the mission is simple first to kill evil jinns so people come for the cure. We will take care of their sorcery and the Ruhan kills their jinns. This is cool. And after a while, some Ruhans left and others stayed. Then those who stayed stopped killing the jinns. We asked them why. They said, we don't know. These are our orders. Ruhans become like angels and will only in the sense not, and not only in the sense of not disobeying orders, but they can't do anything but orders. 
For example, as soon as the jinn gets a certain amount of light, he can see angels. As we go on with the training, I explain to them that doing a lot of good will give them a lot of light, like an angel. They say, angel, what is that? I say, look to my right, and what do you see? He looks and says, nothing at all. Look again, and I recite a tasbih. Suddenly he is dazzled and scared and turns his head away. I say, don't be scared, he won't harm you. This is an angel. He is an angel. Every human being has two angels writing his good and bad actions. If you continue in doing good, you will almost become like him. Now, jinns can see whether angels are writing or not, but they cannot see what they are writing. But if we want to discuss with our scribe angels to ask them, for example, what is the best or worst thing in our files, they will not say a word because they did not receive that order. For this kind of information, you should turn directly to Allah. Anyway, all I wanted to explain to you is when jinns come close to angels, they abandon all trivialities, like some pious men, and, and moreover do nothing but what they are commanded to do. So we cannot even discuss with them. We should just let them carry on their mission. Now, I've gone through a number of different ex extracts in this book. And what I'm going to go through now is the some of the appendices. Um, and, and I thought what would be interesting to look at is the description of the jinn's uh, world they're being. So this is what Abdurruf ben Halilama um, describes as really the characteristics of jinn. Created from fire. This allows us to understand many of their characteristics. Their body is made of fluid energy with no shape or weight and is invisible to us. Some people ask me, what is their real shape? Well, there isn't any. It's like asking what shape is uh, does heat or smell have? When appearing to us, they take a shape corresponding to how we manage, imagine them. Now, I think that's quite an important note. Certainly when you look at fairy lore and, and say, some of the cryptid things that happen, um, there certainly is an element of plucking things from the consciousness of the observer that seems to have happened. Uh, seems to have happened continually and historically with people's experiences with the other, which may or may not be jinn. But there's, that definitely is a recurrent theme. Muslim jinns appear to us as enlightened with beards wearing tunics and turbans while unbelievers are dark and dirty. A female jinn or jinnya in love with a man will come to his dream, dream in the shape of his fantasy woman and eventually a woman he saw during the day. She sees in his mind what he desires and takes that image. Nevertheless, I've had a patient who used to dream of a woman having sex with him that he never saw her head. I asked her and she said, was she hiding her face? And she said she was hiding her face because she was ugly. Being invisible and unreachable makes them strong. In other words, as soon as they appear in our world in a perceptible shape, in a dream or in reality, in reality, they become extremely vulnerable in the shape they take. We just need to catch them and they are our prisoners. We cannot escape. They cannot escape any more than we can kill them. I'm talking about the wicked jinns that came to attack a person, either physically with a knife or a weapon or with bare hands, either by reciting the Quran perfectly preferably Ayat al-Kursi or al fatiha if you don't know it. Even if you see that the jinn is far from you or cannot, you cannot catch him, you just need to look at him and fix him with your eyes in order to maintain him because they cannot appear or disappear while we are looking at them. Then read the Quran and the result will be the same. In this case, you recite verse, you recite the right verses uh, to bring him to you by Allah's will. In my beginnings with Rukia, a jinn came to anger me, and I was having disputes with people around me and my family members when I knew it was a jinn doing that to me. He wasn't inside of me, but just outside. I waited for him, saying to myself, aha, you're the one doing this to me. Wait a bit, I am waiting for you. I don't know what I will do, but I had a certitude that if I did something, I could catch him. As soon as I tracked him, he went away. This is how to show jinns are vulnerable as soon as they appear in our world and how easily we can dominate them. We have known since Einstein that energy and matter can be changed into each other. But a tiny quantity of matter will produce an enormous energy. It's the atomic bomb. So if a jinn takes an aspect of a human or an animal, it's just the appearance like a soap bubble. However frightening it might be, it has no reality. 
The result of their fluid nature or fast movements is fast movements. Actually, the truth is more complex. They are from another time or space, a parallel world. The distances are not the same. They are mental distances. For example, if you show someone's photo to a gin, he can reach him in a few seconds and inform you about him. But he cannot explain to you how to reach him because the path he followed is not of our world and he doesn't know what way to follow in our world. Time is also different. When a gin is not active, he's in a sort of hibernation and time runs slowly. He can take half the years we can take. If he is active and time goes very fast, he can get there and one he can get one year older in a month. If a gin is active with humans, for instance, would it be with sorcerers to help them do sorcery or with healers to help them heal people? It is for him hyperactivity and he gets older very fast. Notice that it is exciting for a gin to collaborate with humans, then for humans to collaborate with gins. So a gin linked to humans will suddenly become extremely active because of their origin. Gins are the subject of two mutations, which are more than humans, much more than humans. So it's not surprising to find them among them handicapped ones and ones with strange bodies and shapes. Moreover, amputations or broken parts heal rather quickly with them, even though pain are as real as ours. For example, a Muslim jinnya was once attacked by evil jins and they pulled off her arm. I told to replace her. I told her to replace her arm back, and I read the Quran until it stuck back by the grace of Allah. So we can talk sorcery and jinn without having a little um, discussion on the evil eye. So the evil eye is the lightest of these three troubles. The person usually isn't aware of it or does not seek treatment. He feels tired, heavy, he lacks energy, except in one case when the evil eye strikes on a specific point and breaks an aptitude or quality within the person. Then it must be treated. For example, a student who did not pass his examination and everyone starts talking about it and then he is now unable um, for any academic success. A sportsman who was cheered and suddenly can no longer improve or has accidents every time. Besides, babies may be very much affected by the evil eye, fever or loss of appetite or sleep. Furthermore, it gives an opportunity to gins in the house to scare them. That is the most common explanation of children's night fears. Gins living outside the house take advantage of a crack made by the evil eye to scare them. We must then treat the child for evil eye and the house for gins. People often think they have the evil eye because they have some bad luck, but this is sorcery. Some people have the power of the evil eye. As soon as they look at something admiring it, it breaks. It is a spiritual effect that cannot be explained by physical laws. Thank Allah, these people are few. Mostly this admiring look carries jealousy and wickedness. Evil eye can... Affect a person, a family, a vehicle, a shop, a house, or whatever, even a small thing. Another type of evil eye is the one made by a group. People start talking about someone of his success, his beauty, his strength, or anything, and his energy is broken. He becomes heavy and lazy. It's the same thing for a shop or anything else. Evil eye can also be due to gins. So to close, um... There's just a kind of a reflection on Rukia and um, its purpose and his, its gentleman's experiences. Uh, Rukia is a field of pure struggle of good against evil. In a physical war, you can make mistakes, kill innocent people, and there are material constraints. But in Rukia, you can't miss your target with the Quran. And facing any difficulty, we will pray to Allah until he gives a solution. Rukia is first of all cure and relief for thousands of people of suffering for many years, having tried out all sorts of solutions without a result. The Hadiths promise tremendous rewards for helping and relieving the suffering and oppressed, as well as a great mercy of Allah. But also, this relief enhances the faith of the victims, and they will get closer to Allah and repent of their sins, practice more prayers, zikir and Quran. In addition to that, when they succeed in killing their jinn or sorcery in their dreams, that will strengthen their personality and faith and give them a stronger protection in the future. Moreover, Quranic treatment turns them away and protects them from sorcery, seeing jinn's worship and other branches of fetishism. It is, it is so sad that so many patients tell us that they went everywhere and made all sorts of sacrifices so desperate they were. The Muslim must bear Allah's burden and never ever turn to such acts. 
But without an, effect, an efficient Islamic solution, ignorance and faith weakness will push many people to drop part of their religion. The next thing we is we now have, by the grace of Allah, the means to beat sorcerers and their allies. The war is declared and the fight is open. Sorcerers call others to help them and the devil sends his troops. Our objective is total elimination of sorcery and its actors. At last in Africa particularly, the triumph of Islam on sorcery, seeing jinn's worship and fetishism, will come by Rakia, inshallah. As sorcery causes great damages on individuals, society, econo econo economy and politics, the development of Rakia will be a historic relief, inshallah. I found a generation of youth willing to carry on this fight, and by Allah's will I've decided to spend all my time in training campaigns. As you may have seen in this fight, Allah has helped us and has shown us some of his power. Cure yourselves, fight, and have no pity for the sorcerers. For such a long time, they, they thought they were untouchable and destroyed so many people's lives. The only word for them is satanic. They have chosen their side. May Allah destroy them all. Okay. So pretty clear where um, the intention is to at the end of that book I hope you enjoyed that um, it was quite a challenging read as it's translated from French and I believe the French is also translated from Arabic so the language is quite clunky in places it's a little bit of a short show uh, this week as I'm a little bit short on time due to some technical hitches that I've been dealing with over the last week um, but we've got some good stuff coming up for you very soon uh, Mark Stavish I've recorded a show with him that'll be coming out next week and Joshua Cutchin will be making a return to the show to talk about his book on changelings so some awesome stuff coming up do stay tuned and uh, and uh, before I shoot off I just wanted to say that the conversation is being really great over in the discord so if you're not active in the discord or or uh, or you're a lurker just chime in join the join the chat join the chat ironically i'm not even the most conversational there which makes a makes a, a welcome change for everybody so i'll leave it there and uh we'll wrap up take care bye